So let's start. It's a trap we are vulnerable. And perhaps the title sounds funny for you because you remember <laughs> the, the Star Wars movie and in particular these scenes. And but the problem behind the scenes, it's no fun, so funny like this movie. Let me introduce me. My name is Resako. I work as developer since 2007 using different languages. Most of them are connected with the JVM, like Kotlin, Scala, Java. I also use another languages like PHP, Node.js, Haskell. <laughs> I participate as technical reviewer on some of the biggest editorials around the world. So the editorials send me just one chapter or a series of chapter or the entire book. I read it. I suggest some improvements or correct some mistakes. I publish some course um, books and theoretical practical scenarios. Some of them appear on the presentation. And last, I participate as a speaker on many conferences. You have my contact information, my LinkedIn, my email, uh, my GitHub. So if you have any dudes, any question after this presentation, or you remember something, I don't know, tomorrow or the next week, just contact me by LinkedIn, send me an email. I will try to help you as soon as possible. So let's go to the context of our problem. We have or we work in a company which contain or have too many libraries and microservices and applications on different languages or the same language, but you have a problem here. So most of the, the applications use or transport or save uh, some critical information. I don't know, your movements in your bank, your credit card information, some information that uh, it's not the best idea that someone steal. So it's relevant for us that take care that our application is secure. Second one, most of the developers can use any library on the application without any restriction. Oh, I find a new library uh, to parse my JSONs in, in an object. Ah, but we have um, Jackson or we have string or we have a uh, JSON. No, no, this library is it's okay. Um, one developer created and have um, 10 reviews. Uh, it's okay for me. So anyone can use any kind of libraries without any restrictions. So you don't have the possibility to say, okay, not use this library. Or imagine in the case of Spring Boot. Okay, try to use Spring Boot at least 2.70 app or app. Okay, uh, no, I, I am okay using a Spring Boot one, but we said, uh, no, it's not my problem. You don't have any kind of rule in the pipeline. I can use anything on my application. And you can know if the dependencies are secure or not. You don't have like a track about oh, this specific library or this specific dependency have some issues, some vulnerabilities. So uh, you need something or find a way to solve all this problem. And last, you'll know which application use a specific version of a library. So again, you use the latest version of a spring and imagine that a, a bug appear on, on, the, on the application, on the, the Spring Boot. How we can know how many other libraries or microservices use the same version of a Spring because we need to up, update the, the, the version of this library, this framework. You don't have any kind of possibility to do it. And which are the problems? Okay, we have some problems and which are the problems that our code is insecure? First one is that someone can find or discover um, a vulnerability and use this vulnerability to enter in our application and do bad things. Bad things like modify the request of the re or the response or send part of the request to another part. Imagine that 
we send some um, critical information and someone capture the information sent by email, by, by any kind of resources to another part. So, okay, and the application continue working. It's like capture, send, and send the same information to the API to do the work. So for us, everything continue working fine. There is not a problem because I send a request and I obtain the same response that I, I expected. Perhaps someone can increment the use uh, of CPU and memory in our application. So at some point, this kind of problems could affect our platform, our microservices. And if the, um, the use of the resources increase a lot, perhaps our platform produce a denial of services. So receive a request, but uh, never responds. And most of these problems, you can find the information and the description on the on the link that appear on the presentation. So yeah, we have a lot of problems. Problems related with the security, problems to uh, restrict or know which of the libraries or which microservices use a specific library or a specific dependencies. So how we can control this problem at some point? The first option is sneak. Sneak is a great uh, tool which offers the possibility to scan your repositories, your POM file, your Gradle uh, properties, and detect which library and which version you use it in your application, and have a database with all the vulnerabilities that exist in, in the different dependencies. So at some point, say, okay, your application, this in particular, have all these vulnerabilities. Great. But the main problem with this tool is that you need to pay a lot for each time that you scan. So imagine that you uh, work in a small company or a medium company, and it's not possible to use this kind of tool because you need to spend a lot of money to use it. So there are other options. SonarCube. Uh, is an option, but the main problem is like only show the vulnerabilities or the um, parts that aren't unsecure on your source code. Nothing related with the dependencies. So if you use Spring Boot and Spring Boot had a vulnerability or Lord4j have a vulnerability, SonarCube don't provide any kind of information. The other alternative is Dependency check. Dependency check, it's free. Great. And give me information about the vulnerabilities. I can use it many times uh, without any kind of problem. And use the same, more or less the same database that the Sneak. So we have everything. What, which is the main problem with this tool? And the main problem with this tool is like, you need to include in each, um, in each project and each time that you execute some kind of um, process, download the entire database. So if you have 10 microservices or 10 libraries and you want to check if the, um, the source code is secure or not, you need to execute 10 times, which is not a good idea. And the second problem with this tool is that you don't have the possibility to restrict the use of some kind of libraries. And also you don't have the possibility to know which microservices or which libraries use uh, a, a one specific library. So it's in the middle, have more or less the, the, bene the benefits uh, to not pay, but you spend more time that each time that you execute a pipeline. And the last is dependency track. Dependency track cover all the things. Give you the possibility to know more or less which are the, um, the vulnerabilities on your search code. You have the possibility to create like a police management, like the quality gate on Sonar. Well, more or less the same, but with vulnerabilities on our search code or our dependencies. Why or which are the main benefits of use this tool, this dependency track? Well, 
First one, because offered to you the possibility to have in one place all the information of different libraries, different microservices, different applications, not just in Java. Of course, this talk is about Java, but if you have application on Node.js or Scala or Kotlin, you can use it. There are some things that you need to consider, but of course it's supported. And check, the, um, give you the possibility to check if um, your application use a specific version of a library and you can do some kind of things related with this. Restrict the use depending of the library, depending of the vulnerability or the criticity of the vulnerabilities that your application have and use multiple sources of information. Of course, the most important, the NBD, the National Database of Vulnerabilities. So uh, this contains a lot of vulnerabilities that are reported for many developers around the world and more or less use the same resource on Sneak. So more or less you have the same information. Support multiple languages is not just connected with Java. And you have the version that is open source and it's free. So you can download, you can run on any place on your infrastructure in your on-prem server or perhaps using AWS or GCP or Azure and everything that you want to have or to use to run this tool is possible. And of course, reduce the time to analyze because you send something to this tool and the tool have the responsibility to analyze all the information all with the, the list of our dependencies with the version and give you the information. But it's like, okay, application produce like a list and and I will send this information with the dependencies to a dependency track. And um, how would the process work? Because I mentioned that I send something to uh, dependency track. First one, you need to run, execute a command to obtain the document. Um, could be a JSON, could be an XML, with all the information about the different dependencies that our application use with the number of version, like a default standard. Um, um, it's not like, okay, if I use Java, there is a format of the file. If I use Scala, there is another uh, fi uh, format of the file. And if I use Node.js or PHP or Go or Rust, I uh, know it's different, totally different. No, the idea is like um, across the different languages, you need to produce the same file with the same information. And this information is sent it to well, first one, you need to transform. And after that, you need to send this file with the information um, to dependency track to process, to take, okay, iterate the different dependencies and the different vulnerabilities and check with the, that, the different databases with vulnerabilities, if secure or not this particular dependency. And after that, you have a report with all the vulnerabilities. Of course, if you don't define um, a quality gate or a police management, which is the, the official name, um, nothing happened with your, with your application. So let's go to the, 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 the code. I will close this and I will show you. This is the repository and contain more or less uh, application, an API, a uh, Jenkins file, and a Docker Compose. And here you will find a table of contents with the requirements that you need to, to follow to run this application, the structure, the technologies, and many other things. Um, and you will have this one, two different or three different branches. So I will, show you uh, using the initial and how we achieve or uh, obtain the result that the final solution. So if you want to, okay, uh, follow this talk step by step, you can download the initial 
branch and do the modification as me. Well, first one, I have an application here which have many dependencies. And in this case, I use Spring Boot version 2.4.2, which have a lot of uh, vulnerabilities. Now, imagine that I don't mention nothing about dependency track, how we can analyze if the dependency is secure or not. Well, you can do this. You can go to um, MAI repository and check if the dependency is vulnerable or not. The other alternative is do the same on Sneak. Uh, so what happened with this approach or with this one? you need to do manually. And of course you spend a lot of time. So uh, in certain scenarios, perhaps you say, oh, I, I perhaps I can do manually. It's not necessary, all these tools. I want to do these kind of things. Well, imagine do this for each of the dependencies that these microservices contain. <laughs> you spend a lot of time to do it. Well, so how we can do, or who we can start with this? Well, you need to, first one, you need to add some plugin to generate this kind of file, this kind of bomb. On, on the section related with the plugins, here, I will add this. Let me add the dependency version uh, here. And I will explain what is this. The name of the dependency or the plugin is Cyclone DX. And it's um, a tool which obtain the information about the different dependencies or the, the dependency management. In our case, I use Maven. So iterate this POM file uh, and try to find all the um, dependencies and traduce or um, and transform the information uh, in a way that um, you can um, export the information. So let me show you, let me go to the, this, I need to change the version of Java because I use the, the last one and this project not support. And I will run MBA package. Um, okay. Don't pay attention to this, all these things that uh, occur behind the scenes. But yes, the last part is like ex create a bomb file here, which exists on the target. So if I refresh, uh, where is my refresh? Reload from the disk. Okay, so uh, target POM file here. I say by default, this, this kind of information. Let me explain, because I explained that what do this cyclone that generate uh, the dependency or iterate the POM file to generate the list of dependencies. So I say, okay, this is an application. Use a specific schema to generate the BOM file. And please include the dependencies that are from, I use it to compile application with these scopes, this particular scope. So I include more or less everything, but look this. Now the test, skip it because are not necessary. When you produce the, the package or you produce the, the, char, the char to export the application, you don't include the, the test. You don't include JUnit. You don't include the Spring Boot test. All these kind of things are skip it. And I say, oh, please, the output need to be in all the formats supported. And then have two different formats, JSON, and XML, and I put the name of the output. In this case, it's bomb and match with the name that appears here. So let's look this. 
This is more or less the, the name of the format, the specification that I put on the, um, on the POM file and a lot of information about uh, the, the plugin. And here start to appear the information about this particular application, like the name, the group ID, the name of the application, the version, the description, the license. And here the most important part all the dependencies and here start okay i have this group and i included a spring boot starter web and all the information the type of license and where uh, which type of dependency um the issue tracker and they have the same happen with all the different um dependencies that you include in your application so look this uh hikari for the uh, pool of uh, connections and Jakarta here. So you have all the list of dependencies and the scope. And the same information appear here. It's totally the same. It's not like, oh, um, I, I find some kind of information on one of the file and another one don't have the same. No, yes, it's, it's exactly the same. And okay, I need to download the dependency uh, track. And dependency track have the ability to give you to, uh, to us a Docker Compose file like, like this with all the configuration because dependency track needs a, a lot of things. It needs a database, need um, a container or application to run the different end and another one to run the backend. Is split in three different components. And you have the possibility to configure um, a lot of things like the security, the law, the, um, the username, and where you want to save the information. And here is the description of all this information. In my case, to reduce this problem, I include everything on this Docker Compose file. So you have everything on the final version <laughs> here you have all the, the the configuration and the jenkins configuration well great so we need to like go to our dependency uh track the default user and password on, on this tool is admin admin and the first time that you enter in the application, you need to remember one thing. You need to change the password and the user. And in the administration, you have here the different formats, the different components, the analyzers that exist, like the databases here, the MBD, here is the feed where it takes the information. Give, have advisor. So you have a lot of information about um, how to configure the tool and the alert in the case that if you push um, something to this tool uh, and produce uh, or contain any kind of vulnerability that is critical, perhaps you want to receive an email about this information. Well, I go to the projects here or the dashboard, the dashboard will show you the entire overview of the entire platform. But in our case, we need to create a project to upload the BOM file. So I will put API catalog. And I think the version is 1.0. And the type of application is uh, the classifier is an application. You have all these things. and you have the possibility to push the information about a Docker file, a Docker file, a Docker Compose. So in my case, it's an application. It, and I can say, well, this is a Java uh, microservice uh, Spring. OK, I create it. I don't have any kind of information about the last time that I upload the file. Uh, so we'll not have information. 
I don't have nothing. And at some point, I need to upload this information. So you can do manually. We can do it. <laughs> or you can upload a bomb file. And to upload a bomb file, I suggest to do this. Uh, put the name of the file and do uh, click on upload. This takes some seconds. It's not like appear quickly because it takes time to uh, decompose and iterate all the entire file. I will refresh because behind the scenes, the process continue working and now appear this. Okay, <laughs> my, my application have a lot of problems related with the <laughs> security. In this particular case, I have four with critical uh, vulnerabilities. And okay, let me see what are the vulnerabilities. If I do click on this tab, I have the information about the criticity of these, um, the different libraries or the different dependencies. And how, you know, on which time appear, because if you continue uploading the, the file, perhaps you don't solve any kind of, of vulnerability. And I don't know, in three months uh, after this, this record, you continue <laughs> with the same problem. If you do click on one of the vulnerabilities, you have the information about the different problems that have this uh, dependency. And if you want more information, you can do click on one of the vulnerabilities and you have the information about how you can solve the problem. In our case, you need to upload uh, or upgrade uh, the library to solve the problem. Okay, great. I have this project um, here with these kind of vulnerabilities and why we can generate like um, uh, some kind of quality gate and say what happened if something is bad, uh, like uh, policies, violations. And here is not an inform, it's a fail. And let me add conditions. First one, the severity of is critical, is high, oh, and I will add another one. And is uh, critical on these scenarios, this policy or this quality gate need to fail. It's like, okay, if you detect any kind of libraries with or dependencies which have vulnerabilities high or critical, please show me like an exception. Of course, you have other options, like the version of a component, the type of license. And if you have the vulnerability ID, in the case that is something very, very specific, you, you can add it. And, okay. And nothing happened here. I create a violation. Well, because the, the quality gate or the policy violation apply to the new uh the new the new uh, each time that you um upload the the bomb file so if you don't analyze again the same project nothing happened so i will do the same and remember that uh when the bomb is uploaded this takes some minutes to or more seconds to analyze and show the policy violations or show the, the possible problems uh, here. Okay, and the analysis was finished. And here I have 10 different violations. So I have at least uh, <laughs> five <coughs> dependencies that continue vulnerabilities, critical or high. And here I have some kind of information, the risk uh, of the vulnerabilities. So imagine that all my dependencies have uh, high vulnerabilities. This risk score increase a lot. And if you solve some of these problems, the high or the, the critical, this high score decrease. So 
it's a way to know which of your projects, or because I have just one, but imagine that you have a lot of projects, which of them have had some kind of problems. Okay, great. It's okay, but I can do this kind of approach each time that I need to upload the information. Imagine that I have uh, 400 microservices or 100 microservices. I can do this each time that I need to deploy a new version. It's not possible for us. So to solve pro this problem, on Jenkins, you have the possibility to uh, do this kind of um, push information through uh, the dependency track. You need to go to uh, Jenkins and on the configure of the, the Jenkins, you need to find dependency. Uh, install it, sorry. Depend dependency track here. You need to install this particular plugin, which give you the possibility to interact with dependency track. And you need to configure on this part at the end, you need to configure which is the URL uh, about dependency track here. Dependency track URL. So with this approach, dependency track or Jenkins understand where is located this tool. So what we need to do to combine these two different tools? Well, first one, you need to have like an API key to push the information because it's, it's like you, you can put the username and the password <laughs> on Jenkins. It's too insecure. On access management, here you have some kind of um, option, which is the name Teams, and you have different Teams. In my case, or by default, exists this, this automation uh, team. You can copy and paste the app key, and you need to be sure that uh, include all these permission. By default, it's only included, bomb uploaded, and view vulnerabilities, but the other ones not appear. So please check that all of these appear on the, on the permission. And what you need to do after that, it's okay, you, you, you mentioned a lot of things. Let me show you. I close all these things. And here you have a Jenkins file inside of uh, API catalog. And at the end, you need to include this. If you never see a pipeline on Jenkins, this is the name of the steps on which directories will execute or will uh, run the different commands. And I will run this command, this particular command. And after that, this is the name of the plugin to push the, the results. I will say, okay, take the information from this directory, which is connected with this location. This makes sense. The project ID, you need to take the project ID from here. Sorry. Here in the URL appears the uh, project ID is this one. So I need to do this one. The synchronous is like, I wait until that you push all the information on the, the, on the tool and give me the information or uh, the information about is everything it's okay or not. And here you need to add the dependency track API key that we saw recently. Okay, everything looks fine. I will go to the main branch. I will change the, um, the project ID to not uh, 
change nothing inside the initial branch. And we will see what happened. Okay, I commit the changes. So I go to this uh, job and let me check on which branch is executed. On initial, no, main branch. And I will execute again. Uh, the first time that you run this pipeline perhaps takes time because download or compile the, the project and takes uh, several minutes to download all the dependencies. Um, but to <laughs> uh, reduce the time to be executed, I just um, run in before that this, this talk. So, okay, I think uh, it's uh, executing the last um, step. Check that not exist on my previous version. And this will push everything, okay? This push everything to dependency track. And if I go to um, here, I will see that the last import was a few seconds ago. So with this approach, I solved all, most of the problem. Okay, you can say me, Ah, uh, yeah, but you need to create the project the first time and put the ID inside of um on the, the Jenkins files. Yes, it's, it's a possible approach. Another approach is dependency track give you to you the possibility to use an API because um, this part that I show you is just only the front end of the application. Behind the scenes, exists an application, a, a Java application that offered to you a Swagger. So you have the possibility to create the project and, and after that save in some place the, the ID and not it's not necessary that you include in the Jenkins file like me, like this here. And, and there is another option that say, okay, how to create or create the, the, the project if you detect that not exist. And the same happened with this, with the, the API key. Perhaps a, a best option is like include a variable, uh, but I, I try to keep simple the idea of, of this example. So to conclude my presentation, best practices. Try to include uh, as a step on your pipeline as me, as I show you, uh, because it's the best alternative to detect the vulnerabilities as soon as possible. Imagine that you have different pipelines, one to deploy, another to commit the changes, and perhaps it's the, the best alternative to include it in, in the pipeline to, to commit the changes or in, on, or in the pipeline of to deploy also. Define rules as me, uh, related with the, the security, with the vulnerabilities or the severity of the problems, or if you want to use, I don't know, uh, Spring Boot, um, uh, all version of a Spring or all version of Log4j that <laughs> some years ago appeared a, a fine problem. Check the false positive. Remember, all the tools that we use always could produce a false positive. So it's a good um, suggestion that check if everything is okay. In our case, or in my case, I exclude, for example, the, um, the libraries connected with the testing. But I saw <laughs> that many developers forgot to put this and include the dependency related with the, um, the testing. and. Oh, yeah, I have a lot of problems with JUnit. Yes, but it's a library just to create tests for nothing more. It's okay. You please ignore it. Use databases. Try to configure all the origin of the database. By default, NBD is configured. If you have the possibility, configure also the GitHub database. So you have two different 
source of truth to constructs uh, about if everything is okay or not with your dependencies. Restrict the access. Yes, <laughs> I know it's obvious, but uh, most of the, the companies forgot these kind of things. Perhaps you, you can give an access just to read the information, but not create user, not create new projects, don't change the, the API key, restrict the access in, in most of the things. Additional resources, here are some books connected with the security and the testing and different things related with the pipeline. Uh, in the middle are the, the most relevant books <laughs> that I suggest. The other ones are connected, uh, how to create a test or different scenarios of tests related with the, the security. And this is the official website of dependency check and dependency track. So you can check if everything is it's okay or related with my talk or perhaps something changed because dependency track more or less uh, launch uh, will release new versions of dependency track at least two or three times in, in a week in a week sorry in a year and most of the things are connected with improvements or, re or things related with the the support of the different versions of Cyclone CD, the, the plugin which generate this kind of bomb. Uh, so check the official website. And this is everything from, from my side. So if you have any doubts, any question, I'm open to answer.